بسم الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. How's everybody doing? الحمد لله. So alhamdulillah, we get to begin inshallah ta'ala this beautiful surah, surah An-Naba, which is surah 78 in terms of the order of the Mus'haf. It is also known as surah Amma or surah Amma Yatasa'alun, also known as surah at tasaul and surah Al-Mu'sirat, because this is one of these unique terms in the surah. This is a surah that has 40 ayat and uh, which is similar to one other surah, which is Surah Qiyamah. That's the only other surah that has 40 ayat. So it has 40 ayat, and bil ijma' it seems to be uh, by consensus, with possibly one exception. But anyway, the overwhelming majority say that it's a Mecki surah, so we're going to stick with that. It's a Mecki surah. And it is, in terms of the order of revelation, number 80. Number 80. And what, are its, what is the main objective? It seems to be primarily surrounded, surrounding the topic of Judgment Day, warning about Judgment Day, and giving evidences for Judgment Day, uh, and Allah knows best. Now in terms of the commands, al-awamir, like Allah Ta'ala giving a command, how many commands do you think there are in the surah? Somebody just throw out a random number. How many commands do you think there are in the surah? There's 40 ayat. No, there's only one. Only one single command. Can anybody, can anybody tell me what it is? You have to go run through it real quick. I don't know if anybody's going to be able to do it, inshallah. There's one command in the surah. It is, uh, I'll just say because I don't think anybody's going to get it. It's in ayah number 30. Allah says, فَذُوقُوا So taste. فَذُوقُوا So subhanAllah, like, you know, usually you know you have many different awamr, many different commands in a given surah. SubhanAllah, this one there's just one. Just taste this punishment. Uh, as Allah Ta'ala says. Now in terms of questions, there's many, many questions. That, well, I shouldn't say that, excuse me. There are four questions, not that many, many. But yes, the first two ayat, there's a difference of opinion whether the second verse is a question or not. But anyway, and then of course, ayat six and seven, uh, these two are questions as well. In terms of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the surah, quite fascinating. When you take a survey of the names of Allah mentioned, you find that in ayah number 36, 37, 38, and 39, these are the names of Allah mentioned in the surah. You have Rabbik, your, your master. Uh, you have Rabb al-Samawati wal-Ardi wa ma baynahum al-Rahman. So you have Rabb and Rahman in Surah ayah number 37. You have Ar-Rahman again in Surah in, in ayah number 38. And then Rabbihi in ayah number 39. So you have Rabb, Rabb, Rahman, Rahman, and Rabb. SubhanAllah, it's just uh, amazing, the theme here. And another interesting theme is uh, how Allah Ta'ala refers to Himself, not in terms of Asma'ullah, because we mentioned them, they're just simply Rabb and Rahman. Uh, in terms of uh, pronouns, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala uses the royal we throughout the entire surah. Only one, Allah doesn't say I, He only says we. And He says so 12 times in the surah. The royal we is used 12 times in the surah, starting in ayah number 6, and then from 8 to 15. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادَ وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ وَخَلَقَنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ So, خَلَقَنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتَ And جَعَلْنَا جَعَلْنَا And so on and so forth. Again and again from ayat 8 to 15 and then ayah number 28, 30 and 40. So 12 times you have. Now in terms of the سبب النزول, the cause of revelation. Ibn Abbas, he said, رضو عنه, he says, كَانَتْ قُرَيْشٌ تجلس لما نزل القرآن فتتحدث فيما بينها فمنهم المصدق ومنهم المكذب به فنزلت عما يتساءلون. So Ibn Abbas he says that Quraysh were sitting around when Quran was being revealed, so they talk about it. Like this is just regular, they'd sit around, they talk, and they talk about it in a very, you could say, loose way. And you know, he's even saying that some of them would confirm it while others deny it. And that in and of itself is very fascinating. So Allah Ta'ala reveals Surah An-Naba as an evaluation, you could say, or as a commentary on the way that they are talking about these ayat. And this is something really fa fascinating. We might say to ourselves, oh, isn't it wonderful that sometimes they'd agree and sometimes they disagree? Yes, in a way, because, you know, people that agree, that seems like a good, you know, moving in the right direction. But it's how you agree. If you agree with something like it's... Like, like, you know, uh, just nonsense information, like just an opinion. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You're not treating it seriously. Whether you agree or disagree, you're not actually going to change your life, change your opinions, actually apply it in any way. And unfortunately, you find a lot of people that are this way. They'll go over Quran and say, wow, you have such a fascinating culture. And I always find that really annoying when people say the word culture, because it's not a culture. Islam is all over the world with, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, 50 plus Muslim majority countries. There's a lot of cultures there, subhanAllah. So it's not a culture. But anyway, people say stuff like that. And they say, I find it fascinating. There's so many things I agree with. Right. 
But there's a difference between just agreeing with it like it's just something cute and fancy or nice or whatever versus like, no, this is the truth. It's not just a, a flavor of the month or whatever the case may be. Now, in terms of the correlations between this surah and the previous, or the, the, the next one, uh, this is 78 going to 79, this surah and surah Naziat, there are many. We talked about many of them before in our, when we covered surah Naziat, so I'm not going to repeat them. I'll just mention the basic idea that surah Naziat and surah Naba are kind of like a pair. Why? Because they're kind of a mirror image of one another. They deal with so many of the same themes, but in a different, you could say, style or focus. Wallahu ta'ala adam bis sawab. Now, in terms of the breakdown of the surah, there are five sections, it seems. You could break this surah down into five sections, and subhanAllah, the five sections themselves have a ring structure. And then if you go into each section, each one has a ring structure. I'm not gonna go through all that in just today. <laughs> that would be way too long. But it's really amazing once you break it down and see how incredible Allah's speech is. Uh, I usually color code it, so maybe one day I'll put this on a PowerPoint so you guys can see it all color coded because it looks really quite beautiful when you see, uh, you know, the, 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 but I'll just, I'll just mention for now the, the meta, you could say, ring structure. From ayat one to five, you have questions about Judgment Day, primarily. And by the way, even though that section has its own rhyming pattern, after that, the rhyme pattern switches. So that first section is about these people questioning, and the, the strong, strongest opinion is that they're questioning about, you know, Islam in general, the Quran, the, the, the Prophet Sallam, whether he's a prophet or not, but also it seems that the major theme that they're asking about is Judgment Day. Is there really gonna be a resurrection? And that's correlated with Ayat 37 to 40, which is the fifth section, which is about Judgment Day. You know, on that day, you know, nobody will, we will be able to speak except if Allah gives them permission, you know, and the disbeliever will say, what, I wish I was dust. This was all on Judgment Day. So you can see the first section, the last section, both about, you know, questioning and just sort of laughing about and just sort of t treating it like it's not serious. And then you get to see how serious it is in the last section. Obviously, there's a clear correlation between one and five. Then two and three. Two is Ayat 6 to 16, where Allah Ta'ala is talking about how beautiful His creation is in this life. Right? All the different blessings he gave us in this world and how he designed it for our life and for our convenience. A very long section, 6 to 16, that's 11 ayat here, talking about how beautiful Allah Ta'ala made this world. Then uh, the fourth section is from 31 to 36, talking about the beautiful way Allah Ta'ala designed the next life, Jannah, paradise. So look at this, uh, you know, this life and how, I, how beautiful I designed it, and this is what I'm going to design for you in Al-Akhirah, Ayat 31 to 36. So you have Judgment Day, Judgment Day, the beautiful creation in this life, the beautiful creation in the next life. And so that's one and five, two and four. And then number three is what? Judgment day and hellfire for the disbelievers. The core of the surah is from ayat 17 to 30. Uh, and it's a very scary section. That whole core section is all about in, you know, imbuing or infusing the disbelievers with fear and a sense of urgency and seriousness about judgment day. And then after that, hellfire for these disbelievers. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. Uh, I also wanted to mention, uh, this is really important, I think, that we always sort of take a step back and appreciate the Qur'an in its entirety. We did this when we covered Surah um, uh, uh, um, uh, 93, which is uh, Luha. Um, and so since we're re reaching another uh, you know, break, inshallah ta'ala, I'll mention it again. The Prophet says something very, very interesting. This is, uh, uh, the Prophet saying what? أُعْطِيتُ مَا تَوْرَاتِ السَّبْعَ I was given in the place of the Torah, the seven long surahs, okay? وَأُعْطِيتُ مَكَانَ zabur al الْمِئِينَ And I was given in the place of the Psalms, the, the book of Dawud the hundreds, the hundreds. وَأُعْطِيتُ مَكَانَ الْإِنْجِيلِ الْمَثَانِي And I was given in the place of the Gospel, the book of Isa السلام, the oft-repeated or the following surahs. And then, وَفُضِّلْتُ uh, and I was given extra the separate surahs. So you might ask yourself, well, what are the division? If the, if the whole Quran is 114 surahs, well, what, where are the divisions at? So, wallahu ta'ala a'lam, it seems that the strongest opinion is that the seven long surahs are two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight and nine together. So from Surah Baqarah, Ali Imran, Nisa, Ma'ida, uh, An'am, uh, uh, seven is A'raf, and then eight and nine, because there's no Bismillah between them and because they have the same theme, plus because Anfal is short and Tawbah is long, some consider that like one. Even though there are two surahs, it's like one. So that, that right there is like in the place of what? A Torah, the book of Musa alayhi Then Al-Mi'een, Al-Mi'een is from 10 to 32. 10 is Surah Yunus, all the way to 32, which is Surah um, uh, 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 Sajda. So that's roughly, most of them have roughly in the hundred or at least the size of roughly a hundred ayat, something in that range. Then Al-Mathani, and by the way, that's in the place of the Zabur, the Psalms of David, alayhi salam. 
Then Al-Mathani was in the place of Isa alayhi salam's Injil, the, the Gospel. And that's from 33, which is Surah Al-Ahzab, all the way to 49, which is Surah Hujarat. And then Al-Mufassal is from uh, 50 all the way to 114. So the rest of the, the ending of the Qur'an. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the Mufassal is also divided into Al-Mufassal, uh, uh, Tiwal Al-Mufassal, uh, Awasit Al-Mufassal, and Qisar Al-Mufassal. So there's the long, the middle, and the short in terms of these Mufassal. The reason I bring this up is because the Tiwal, the long middle ones, are which ones? From 50 to 77, that's uh, uh, Qaf, all the way to 77, which is uh, uh, Mursalat. And then Awasit is from 78 to 92. That's this surah right here, which is uh, uh, Surah Naba, all the way to 92, which is Surah Al-Layl. And, uh, and the first ones, 50 to 77, the Prophet would read these at, surah, at Salat Al-Fajr uh, very often, from 50 to 77. Very often, these long Mufassal surahs, he'd read them at Fajr. Then from 78 to 92, from Surah Naba, all the way to Layl, the Prophet would read these, after, uh, read these in Asr and Isha. And then these shortest ones, Qisar Al-Mufassal, from 93 to 114, the Prophet would read these, these really short ones in Salat al-Maghrib. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam bi So this gives you an idea that Maghrib is supposed to be like shorter and Fajr is supposed to be much longer, whereas uh, Asr and Isha are a little bit long, but not too long, of course, and Allah knows best. So I just thought that was very uh, nice because Alhamdulillah, we've already covered the tafsir of all the Qisar and Mufassal, and now inshallah ta'ala with this surah, we should be finishing all of the tafsir of the Awasit al-Mufassal as well inshallah ta'ala by the time we finish this surah, bi'idhnillah. Now a few more points about uh, uh, introductory points that sort of give us some, um, you could say, uh, the overview, you know, sort of uh, uh, the bird's eye view of this uh, surah. There are seven surahs in the Quran that begin with a question. They are surah 29 being uh, surah An-Kabut, 66 Tahrim, 76, which is Insan, 88 Ghashiya, uh, Sharh, uh, 94, 105, is uh, Surah uh, Fil and then Ma'un, which is 107. So these all begin with questions. And there are three surahs that begin talking about a question. And they are Surah 8, Surah Anfal, Yes Alunaka Anil Anfal, they ask you, they ask you a question about these Anfal. Surah 70, Surah Ma'arij, Sa'ala Sa'ilun bi Adabin Waqi', and then 78, which is this Surah, Amma Yata Sa'alun, they're asking you about this. Uh, about, about what are they asking? That's, that's how you could translate it. So SubhanAllah, it's quite interesting. Uh, uh, the way Allah Ta'ala has broken it down. So we can begin with the first ayah today, inshallah Ta'ala, and then we will get much more deeper into it uh, next week. But I'm just going to go for the first ayah, since this is an introduction. So this could be, so amma is a combination of an, like concerning, and ma, which could be ma mausula or ma istifhamiya, or al istifham, which means what? That this can mean about what are they asking one another? It could be a question. What are they asking each other about? What are they asking each other about? That could be one way. And this is the type of question that could be istifham lit-tafkhim or lit ta'zim or maybe istifham lit ta'ajjub. In other words, it could be the type of question like, I can't believe it. Like, I'm so baffled and amazed at this type of questioning that they're having, which is equivalent to saying like, oh, really? Like, I'm in shock. You're really asking about this? So this could be a sense of shock, or it could be istifham al tahqir It could be a asking of belittlement. Are you guys going to really ask about this? Like, you're in some sort of a position to ask? So there's different opinions. Then another opinion is that the ma here is ma mawsula, yani equivalent to al So the translation would be regarding that which they're asking about. And that would make it just talking about it, a question. Like, anil yatasa'alun, similar to that. Amma yatasa'alun, about concerning, regarding what they are asking about. This would suggest that Allah Ta'ala is now responding to their question. Now, the word tasa'ul, yani sa'ala means to ask a question. Tasa'ul is to ask mutually. So it means that we're asking one another. So that means we're all sitting around and having this conversation, trying to understand something. But also, tasa'ul could be within yourself. You're asking your own self. In other words, you're always wondering. That's another yatasa'alun. What are they wondering about? I'm asking myself all the time, is this, is this the case? I don't know, I'm, I'm wondering about it a lot. So these are two perspectives on this word, yatasa'alun. Of course, this could be the disbelievers asking each other, that's the strongest opinion. And unfortunately, Allah Ta'ala is pointing to the fact that this is the blind leading the blind. These disbelievers are asking, what do you think about this? Yeah, this doesn't make sense to me, this doesn't make sense to me. Who are you people? None of you have access to al-ghayb. None of you have access to this realm of the unseen. None of you are qualified. You're a, a bunch of blind leading the blind, unfortunately. And so Allah Ta'ala is pointing this out. And, or another position is that the disbelievers are asking the believers or the Prophet in a mocking manner. This again is a very strong position. That, what are they asking about? 
They're asking you in a mocking and ridiculing manner. Unfortunately, they're not taking it serious. That's why the ending, the conclusion is just showing how serious this is and how you should not talk. How Allah Ta'ala says, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you won't be able to say whatever you want. That's the contrast of the ending of the surah. You know, they won't have khitabah. They won't have the ability to say one single word. So you're speaking so comfortably, so loose, so lax, not realizing that every single word is being recorded, that the power of speech is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you should take your conversations extremely seriously because everything will be accounted for. And so as a believer, you're supposed to be very cautious. We know the Prophet said, is, is there anything that throws people on their faces in the fire more than this tongue? And subhanAllah, we have to take the tongue very seriously. Again, Consistently you find that the perspective and the mindset of the believer is subhanAllah al-aqs. It's the exact opposite of the disbeliever. They talk like they don't care. They tweet like they don't care. They send messages. They leave little nasty comments online. Nothing matters. Oh, it's fine. I just made a little joke. Nobody's going to remember it. SubhanAllah, the believer has the exact flipped attitude, which is what? That every word is serious and that the, 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 the reality and the gift of being able to discuss and do research and to ask questions and to get answers. This is a huge responsibility that needs to be taken very, very seriously. It should not be used with mocking, especially so childishly. Uh, yes. Now, people ask questions as a means to do what? To seek knowledge. The sincere will do that. But some people, they do so with the objective to mock. Hey, did you hear that? Is you, are you serious? I can't believe you said that. And they just want to, and this is what seems to be uh, addressed here. But also another a uh, cause why people ask questions is to improve their attacks against Islam. So this could also be addressing what? The disbelievers who what are they asking about and what is their intent? And is the intention just to get ammunition to attack Islam? If people mockingly ask uh, about Islam, don't be discouraged. Allah Ta'ala is reminding you that this has been happening for a very long time. So those of you, mashallah, who are at the universities and they have da'wah booths and they try to have conversations, and I've been in that situation as well, I'm sure many of you has, have as well. Some people pass by, oh yeah, I got a question. Why about, why is this? Why is that? Ha ha ha. And they make all sorts of jokes about it. Just remember that Allah Ta'ala revealed, they're, they're mockingly asking these questions. This is nothing new. In fact, this is the path of the MBS, so you should feel good and feel reassured that this is a good situation that you are in. And a really powerful point that I think is beautiful is that when people ask questions, they're typically putting themselves in the position of evaluator. I'm evaluating you. You are, you know, have to dance to my tune. I don't know if I agree with this. I don't know if I agree with that. Dance, puppet, show me what you got, right? Impress me, right? That's the attitude. While uh, 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 putting the questioned person, as in the Prophet ﷺ, in the evaluated position. Instead of proceeding with that framework, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala evaluates them. That's these first five ayat, Allah ta'ala is putting them in their place. I'm gonna evaluate the way you're questioning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate that you guys don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, do you guys even know what you're talking about? You, don't, you guys don't even have any, have any consistent position. If you don't even have a consistent position, what's so funny about this? How are you so confident? Why are you mocking? You don't even have a position to mock from. You don't even agree with one another. You guys don't have a, a, a solid front to begin with. And we're going to get into more detail about that when we get to that ayah, inshallah ta'ala. So just the framework of this surah is saying you're trying to evaluate the Prophet but Allah is evaluating you. And this is a very important point. And furthermore, another perspective on yatasa'alun, asking each other and wondering, is that it could imply that the disbelievers are nervously asking each other about this revelation. Why? Because they fear being exposed. They've already heard many surahs that talk about them, that talk about what's going on in their hearts and their hidden motives and how they're liars and how they know, uh, you know the truth when they see it and when they hear it. And this is similar to the way Allah Ta'ala uh, uh, talks about the hypocrites when Allah says, يَحْذَرُ munafiqun." The hypocrites are apprehensive and are afraid lest a surah be revealed about them informing them of what is in their hearts. So this could be the same thing, that they're asking each other, why? Because they're nervous that the Prophet will bring them ayat revealed by Allah Ta'ala that's exposing them. So this is a fear that they have. And of course, although this verse is referring to the idolaters of Quraysh, the Quraysh aren't mentioned. You know, or no, Allah Ta'ala doesn't mention uh, that al uh, Othan, I should say. Allah Ta'ala doesn't mention that the who is doing this questioning. Why is that the case? One, because it's known through the context of the seerah of the life of the Prophet. And number two, because 
this phenomenon of disbelievers discussing and debating about Islam will continue until Judgment Day. It is never going to end. So SubhanAllah, even he, right here, right now, across the world, there are disbelievers that are maybe jokingly, mockingly saying, oh yeah, this, this is Islam. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about their beliefs about this? What do you think about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And SubhanAllah, they have no consistency and they have no set answer. Just like 1400 years ago, they were saying, Sahir, Majnoon, Kadhab, and they had all, you know, Asatir uh, al They had all these different theories because they could not agree on anything in the same way nowadays. They have no way to consolidate one opinion because subhanAllah, this Islam cannot be pinned down to one thing except for the truth and Allah knows best. So I don't want to make this too long. I just want to give a short introduction. Inshallah, we'll continue with ayah number two next week. But I will uh, you know, encourage anybody if they have questions or comments to inshallah ta'ala. Give any if you have some excitement about this surah inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.